Well, hello, sunshine. What we're going to do today, we're going to cut the squish on this cylinder. It ain't how I liked it, so I'm going to change it. Not really after compression. You're a good boy. Not really after compression as much as I was after a better squish band. I didn't, I didn't like the one that was in it. Didn't like the shape and didn't like the size of it. Uh, so we changed that. Um, and all I got, guys, is a little mini lathe. Seven, what, a 7 by 12, 7 by 14 mini lathe. One of them little cheap ones. I've had it for probably, oh, I'd say over 20 years. Um, I got rid of my bigger gap bed lathe. Got rid of my bridge port. Got rid of my crankshaft grinding machine. Got rid of my piston maker. I wish I had my piston maker back. Got rid of my shapers. Um, the only thing I got left is a mini mill and a mini lathe, which is all I need anymore. I'm not doing a bunch of machining anymore. Uh... And how do you get by with a little mini lathe? I mean, I bought it just, if I need a little bushing here on the farm, I can turn it out, things like that. Um, but the, you got to learn to do some other stuff different. Uh, I'll show you this fixture here that I built for for doing squish uh, or working in top of the cylinder. It's a, it's a fixed bore cylinder or a this is just a finished bore cylinder. They're parallel between here and there, which is nice. And on my three jaw chuck, those mini lays are small enough, they'll actually clamp inside that one inch bore. So then this here's wherever it's at, right? But this is parallel to this. So when I mash this up against the face of the next step in the jaws, it gets this pretty parallel, uh, which is important on this side kind of important on this side um, but I'm not turning this I'm turning this now steel's got a fin on top here and I just run a piece of quarter inch key stock there's a boss in there and I run a quarter inch piece of key stock and bridge that hole and that boss sits on that key stock now I get to move the bottom of this independent of the top just like you would with a fixture in a four jaw chuck I'm moving this it may not be a solid. I can't take a 60 thousandths cut. Um, possibly it could get knocked back off. But I can bump this bottom around as I go and get that started centering up. And any any of you guys that centered up for a squish band know it's 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 measure inside deep, then measure out here, then back inside, and you keep you keep narrowing the gaps down. Now when I'm zeroing back here, of course I knock the bottom. Around when I'm zeroing out here, um, I'm, I'm changing it with these bolts. Loosen one, tighten the other. Um, same thing you do on a four jaw chuck. Uh, but it works. You guys remember way back when, when I scored that one cylinder. Here's actually exactly how I did it. What I did is I went in with my boring bar and I thought I was zeroed out or I thought I'd went in there and touched off, touched off off the wrong place. I was off. So, uh, never even got turning the squish and that cut a cut a uh, groove in that cylinder just a little bit from the top. Uh, it trashed it. That was my fault. Uh, to help combat that problem, since I don't have a DRO on this little stuff, and it's hard to tell, there's actually not even measuring on the traverse side of the uh, carriage. Uh, any thousandth or two you want to do and be able to see, you got to do a cross slide. So there's a lot of problems with them but you can you can make it work one of the ways i made it work i've got one of these little wireless endoscopes i don't know it was nine ten bucks i just put that on there with some like chicken steak and that's and it's got a light on it i can run this boring bar back in there and i can basically see what i'm doing um, it's real close and then i just take my camera holder for a cell phone it's mag mounted on the wall I'm sitting there instead of watching a DRO. I'm sitting there watching my watching my cell phone, which is taking this here, and actually done a real good job. Um, but anyhow, I'm gonna walk you through that and show that to you. Um, we got some stuff coming up. I'm also gonna have to cut the base. I'll probably show you how I do that eventually too. Um, but this isn't. I haven't put this on the saw to get any timing yet. I just knew the squish ain't where I wanted it to begin with. Um, so we went from 100,000 squish to 180,000 squish. I wanted more squish. All right, brand new cylinder. Hadn't been molested yet. So we're going to try 
cutting a squish first. I don't like the squish band in it. I don't like it at all. Um, it's too narrow. It's probably only hundred thousandths wide. I believe it needs to be wider than that. I'm not at necessarily after compression. That's what we're going to do. Now you'll notice there's a cord coming out of this boring bar. And it's just a little mini micro lathe. You can see it is a what a 7 by 14 or something. 7 by 12. Uh, no digital readout of course. And all the dials they're suspect. Uh, I've got it zeroed up. Uh, but this cord coming out that goes to my little wireless camera and let me show you what we're looking at and we're looking at my cell phone right here which is doing that wireless camera so i can see it and you can't hardly see it but if i and i have you can't hardly see it and i have to move it i have to move the camera and there ain't much room for it but right there's the corner of my cutter bar right there at the top of them pliers I can see it. You probably can't. Um, there's my squish band right here. That's the edge of the cylinder wall. Uh, there's combustion chamber. Uh, so yeah, she. Uh, it's got a little light on the end of it. There's the cutter bar right there, or there's the cutter tooth right there. See, I can see where I'm cutting here. It's, it's cleaned up pretty good. Uh, of course, it's sure hard to it's zoomed in so much that camera's so close. But I can see my cut line. I'm cutting right here, and I'm headed to that dark corner. Uh, and I can keep this lathe spinning, of course, so the spark plug holes open. I can. I can just shoot air just at the general area of the top of that while it's spinning and it blows them chips out there pretty good. But mostly I'm not watching that cutter, I'm watching this little line up above it. Cutter's moved. I zoomed it in. It's right in the middle. We're headed to that dark corner. I think we're going to call this cut here good. Okay, we about zoomed her up about all we can do, I think. That little deal there just worked pretty good, didn't it? <laughs> 